Hello everybody and welcome to my new video. Uh, today I wanted to explain exactly how my discounted earnings model actually works. Uh, I'm going to be leaving a link to this in the description of the video so you guys can all try it out. All right, so first of all, let's start with the ticker in the left hand side. Uh, here we're analyzing Apple, but if we wanted to change this, we could change this to Microsoft, MSFT, and you can see the market cap and price loads in automatically. Now, the thing about this is this uses Google Finance. Uh, if you can't see that, uh, let me actually move this down a little bit and show you what I'm looking at. Yeah, so this uses Google Finance uh, calculation which is completely free in Google Sheets. Uh, the thing about it is that sometimes this will like time out and the market cap will no longer show. And so that's why over here on the right side, I have it where you enter this manually. And sometimes the market cap and share count can be a little bit off as well. So you always wanna verify using Yahoo Finance or TradingView. So right away, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this number and I can do that by double clicking and finding this here and I'm going to be putting that into my manual market cap and then also for the share or for the price so here we're going to double click this and put the price over here all right it uh, kind of screwed up my boxes but that's okay for now the next thing that we're going to talk about is our EPS estimate. So where do we get this earnings per share estimate and why are we using earnings per share rather than just earnings? Well, the reason why I'm using earnings per share is because I can't find any website that will actually show earnings, total earnings. They always do it in earnings per share estimates. So that's why we're using earnings per share. And then we can also do revenue estimate as well. The good thing about using a revenue estimate is we use that with this second model. And the good thing about it is that it works for any company if they have profits right now or not. Either way, it works. Next, we've got buybacks. And the reason why we do buybacks is because we're using the earnings per share estimate rather than total earnings. And buybacks are part of your return. So we don't want it counted twice. You see, earnings per share, uh, if they did a significant amount of buybacks, that's going to boost the earnings per share. But what we want is we just want the total amount of earnings. So that's why we're also using buybacks to, to have a new share count. And then to get our earnings estimate, we're just going to multiply our earnings per share by our new share count. And then that's going to be our first number over here. Next, net debt. Net debt is also used in uh, discounted earnings models because uh, debt must be paid off at some point. Uh, it can either be, right, I mean, right, most companies show their interest expense, but that could continue forever until they pay off the debt. So net debt is in here as well, and we can calculate our fair share price without debt and our fair share price after counting all of the debt as well. Now, most of the time, the fair share price is gonna be somewhere in between those two numbers, just saying that uh, the debt might not be as dangerous as we would usually think. Next, we have discount rate. Now, discount rate is the basically the return that you'd like to see on your money. Now, most of the time, I'm going to use 10% here, but sometimes I might want a higher return at like 12%, 0.12. So maybe we use 12% here. And the exit multiple is the exit multiple in terms of price to earnings ratio. Now, the bigger the company is and the more stagnant it is, usually those trade at a lower price to earnings ratio. In the case of Microsoft, we could see that Microsoft is a high quality business and 
will probably continue growing basically forever into the future. So maybe we make that exit multiple kind of high at maybe like a 22. All right, to find earnings per share estimates, revenue estimates, all of this stuff, we're going to use Yahoo Finance and TradingView. Here we are on Yahoo Finance, and to find the earnings estimate, we're going to go to Analysis, and we can see the EPS estimate right here, 11.66 is the average estimate among 41 analysts for next year of 2024. And then for revenue estimate, we can also look at the average estimate for revenue at 244 billion for the average. The other two numbers, I like to use TradingView. So we'll go over to TradingView. And I have Microsoft pulled up here. Uh, to find it, we're going to go to Financials, the Statements tab, and we can go to Balance Sheet. And for the most recent quarter, we can see their net debt at 30.34 billion, and then cash flow to find the buybacks. So buybacks, we can see under cash from financing activities and the retirement of stock at 20 billion. So they bought back 20 billion worth of stock last year, and we're going to expect them to buy back 20 billion next year as well. So back to the sheet, we're going to enter those numbers. Right here, EPS estimate of 11.66, the revenue estimate of 244 billion, and this is in millions, so 244,000 millions, and then buybacks were 30, uh, no, 20 billion, and the net debt was 30 billion. Now that we have all of our numbers entered, the only thing we have to do is project growth into the future, as well as project the revenue growth into the future and profit margins into the future. So here we have two models. You can use one or the other, or you can use both. The good thing about the revenue one is that it works with companies that don't have earnings, uh, or if they have negative earnings but high revenue growth and they expect to be profitable in the future, it's easy to model with the revenue model. But first of all, we've got Microsoft here. We've got their estimate for 2024. We're starting with that number, and then we want to project that growth into the future. Uh, Microsoft is high quality, so I'm, I'm uh, guessing we can put their growth maybe next year at, I don't know, 12%, and then We'll just project that for a few years and then maybe it drops a little bit and drops again. And maybe we go with this for their earnings growth. Uh, next thing we can do is we could do their revenue and maybe their revenue is pretty similar. Uh, another good way to check this is from 2024 into 2025. Usually there is an estimate on Yahoo Finance, so you can check that as well but we'll just say a 15% revenue growth, and then next a 12%, and it probably slows down pretty rapidly. It's kind of hard to get revenue growth with these large companies already, but Microsoft does have plenty of pricing power. So we'll just do that for the revenue growth, and then profit margins. Uh, usually there's expanding margins in the tech industry, so we'll start with 30% and we'll go up from there. Uh, maybe they get up to a 40% margin and stay there. And we can see that everything gets calculated out fine and dandy. We can see that the fair, fair value is calculated at a discount rate of 12%. So this is if you wanted a 12% return on your money for every single year after 2023. Uh, if we were okay with a smaller return on our money, we just have to change this to 0.1, so maybe we expect a 10% return. And we can see the fair share price has gone up a little bit. Maybe we expect a little bit less than that at maybe 8%. And we can see the fair value has gone up, but it's still not quite at its current price. All right, so if we put it at 0.06, we could say that if you bought Microsoft today, 
you would be expecting a 6% return going into the future, which is still better than bonds, but it is a stock, so there are market risks. Um, anyways, that is the explanation. I hope it was helpful to all of you guys. Uh, if, uh, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments because I will for surely try and answer them. Um, otherwise, uh, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you like these videos and you want to see me analyze stocks just like Microsoft, then hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be coming out with some new videos very soon, and I'll see you in the next one.